And as someone who has never questioned her value, it makes me so much more passionate to make sure that other people do know their value because I know what it feels to be valued. Hi, friends. This is Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where Joyce teaches the Word of God in her practical, no-nonsense way. And my friends and I talk about the real stuff of living it. And believe me, we hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky with my friends Aaron Cluley and Jay, three women who are all in very different stages of life, but we understand the importance of having honest, loving friends around you. And sometimes when we need a little extra help, we call up Miss Joyce and she tackles the toughest questions because sometimes you just need to talk about life with your girlfriends. So consider yourselves one of us now and let's talk it out together. Let's talk it out. Hi. 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 Hello. You're both looking lovely today. Yeah, can we talk about our new like our new do's? Yeah, Jay and I have some some you, swoopy hairs. You're going both on. looking wonderful with your new do's. I mean, you look wonderful too. Well, I don't have anything new. You don't have a new do, no. but you got but you, you got, got a new do. you. Sometimes I have a don't. <laughs> <laughs> I had that yesterday. <laughs> when you get your hair cut, you got to figure out how to do it. Uh huh. And sometimes it doesn't work so great. So in meetings, I saw myself on Zoom, and I had like a like a light bulb. It was really rounded here and then straight down. Uh oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. So that's that a, don't. a don't. That's yeah. a don't. But yeah. it looks really good today. I think today. it's looking yeah. great. And the bangs. Yeah. My bang. The swoop. My bang. Yes, Very nice. My swoop. Yep. Yes. I've added some hair to my head. and <laughs> We'll see how long it lasts. <laughs> I love it when you add hair. Yeah. Such yeah. A fun yeah. I add and take away. You know, blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was just talking about how I'm going to do this entire episode like I'm wearing mittens uh-huh. <laughs> because my nails look really bad. <laughs> so, pay no do. attention. <laughs> <laughs> it's pay normal. no attention to the puppy paws. <laughs> <laughs> this is totally normal. Everything yes, is fine. This is how everybody does it. Uh, well, today we're talking about something that is so near to all of our hearts. And I'm so glad that you're here to share with this too, because it is, I think, one one of the most important things we can talk about, and that is where we find our value in Christ. Mm -hmm. And do we really understand it? You know, do we understand how valuable we are and what it does for us when we really get that? Yeah. So let me, let me just start by asking both of you, have, have there been times, what have been some of the struggles that you guys have had in understanding your own value? <sighs> Just a funny story. Extra, it wasn't funny in the moment. I was really mad about it. But you, it happened to you too. I went car shopping. This was years ago, and I still remember it vividly. Mike and I went to go look for cars, and the salesman would not look at me. Mm. And so it was like a like a personal goal of mine to get him to talk to me. I kind of like that in general. Like if someone doesn't like me, I'll want to. It's like a goal. But anyways, he wouldn't look at me. He wouldn't talk to me. And. I was the one who would tell Mike, no, I don't like this one. Let's go. So right. he wasn't making smart choices, but he would tell everything to my husband. Oh, that's and, so annoying. Oh. And he was rude to me. And I, he called me stupid at one point, like jokingly. <gasps> no. Wait a minute. What car do you have to We don't play it that. It was being sarcastic. Take my earrings off. Where, Thank where you. You he? fight about yeah, it. Yeah, where is um, he at? But I just, uh. I felt... I felt so devalued. And yeah, it, like, oh it's gosh. a silly example. Like, it, it was no big deal, but still... Like, I know you, that's a small thing to me, and you've, the stories you've told about what you've seen around the world, it just was a glimpse of that. So but I know what you mean. I've, I've had that, too. Like, yeah. I would guess that you handled it much better than I did. <laughs> you were so you, fun, though. You though. probably, you know, you probably were sharing the love of Christ for him to, you know, see the error of his ways, and I just wanted to tell him <laughs> that he was an idiot. Did you, <laughs> no, did I did you? not say okay. those words. I did not I didn't say either. those words. But anyway, um, yeah, it just, it's so, it's just kind of soul crushing. Yeah. When it's like you're not even in a room mm -hmm. just because you're a woman. Yeah. And um, I, I've had it happen, of course, at car dealerships. Some, you know, I remember one insurance person in particular. And after a while, he's talking and I'm just like, Yes, yes. Hello. <laughs> Do you see me? Yes. Oh, but anyway, yeah. I, I think we've all probably experienced things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, for me, I've talked about this several times before of how, like, how I was raised and, you know, just the importance of the foundation in, in the word. My dad was a pastor and my mom um, was, a, was a teacher, but they instilled in us the value of 
biblical foundation, but also education Mm -hmm. because they weren't afforded a lot of those like luxuries growing up. Like they still in St. Louis when they were growing up, there was still segregation. Like they still had like Mm -hmm. they had a lot of challenges that they had to face. And so uh, for my father to get us out of the inner city and into the 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 county was a big deal. And then he worked super hard as a maintenance man to put us in private school. So Mm -hmm. I valued Mm-hmm. I valued education to a highest thing. I didn't realize that that was a part of my my identity, you mm-hmm. know, but I valued education. And so even when I went went further to get my college degrees and things like that, I remember um, having one of some of my first experiences in the workplace, you know, um, being overlooked or or being, and I, you know, like, you know, about all the racial stuff that's going on. But like, I remember feeling that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot. Mm -hmm. And so my value, I didn't, like I said, I didn't realize it was in my, in my education and my knowledge. But that feeling of always having to fight Mm -hmm. or always having to prove Mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. And and that's, that could be self-inflicted. That could have been self-inflicted. But I remember feeling that multiple times that like when we when I was thinking about this and studying this it was like I can't just pinpoint just one instance mm-hmm. because it hap- it happened and happens to me it feels like a lot yeah. whether it be in the workplace or in ministry or, or whatever like sure and so it ta- it tackles my self-esteem my value my worth and I've really had to do some some soul searching with that because it, it definitely to feel like I wasn't worthy of mm. a position mm. or, yeah, you know, just because of certain th- certain things. That sure. I yeah. I love that you're bringing this up because this is something that impacts everybody on different levels. Yeah. In other words, you face so many things as a person of color. You face so many things as a woman. We have some men who love to tag along and talk it out with us on the podcast, too. And I'm sure that they have felt devalued Mm -hmm. in different ways Mm -hmm. as well. And so what you're talking about, Jay, with finding, was it education? Was it the right job? Mm -hmm. You know, we've all been there where we try to find that thing that gives us value. And so what we need to really figure out today is what is it? Mm -hmm. What is the, the one thing Mm -hmm. that really works and and does it for us because like you were saying um like i've tried nothing else gets it yeah the other things they're they're good for us they help us but they're not going to make a foundation of real worth and value and our friend nancy alcorn is going to be with us today nancy is the founder and the president of mercy multiplied and it is a ministry that has been helping young women deal with these issues mm-hmm. in major ways for decades. And I'm, I'm so grateful for what they do. And I just yeah. love Nancy. And she sees firsthand the impact that not understanding your value in Christ really has mm-hmm. and, and helps many people overcome that. So she'll be joining us here in a little bit. So we're really so looking excited. forward to that. Very excited. <laughs> well, I, I would love to just start out with talking about the fact that if you've ever felt undervalued as a woman, um, you're not alone. And I, I think that's one thing that we often think is mm-hmm. that it's just me. You right. know, why am I dealing yeah. with this? I, I see those other people and they seem to be fine. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it isn't true. It's not that way at all. So we're going to start with what the Word of God says and what Joyce is teaching about where our value comes from. Let's take a listen and then we'll talk about it. You are valuable. Not because you look a certain way or don't look a certain way. Not because you have uh, some kind of a title that goes along with your job or because you do whatever you would think would be the lowliest job on earth. Your value is not tied up in any of that stuff. The Apostle Paul talks very openly in Philippians chapter 3 and he said, look, if anybody had a reason to rely on the flesh, I had one greater than all of you. He said, I was highly educated, not just a Pharisee, but a Pharisee of the Pharisees. I was in the right group. I had money. I had influence. I knew all the right people. And yet Paul said, I would get rid of all of it. And I consider it all trash and rubbish compared to the priceless privilege of knowing him and being found and known as in 
him. I'm going to tell you why you're worth something and worth just as much as anybody else on the planet. Because God loves you and because he sent his only son to die for you. And if, if you would have been the only person on the earth, he would have still done the same thing. I said, if you would have been the only person on the earth, and that just makes my mind go tilt, 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 tilt. No, uh, yeah. I mean, God loves everybody. We can accept that. But God loves you. On your worst day, just as much as on your best day. You know why? Because love is not something that God is even able to turn on and off like we do. You see, love is not even really something God does. It's who he is. God is love. And I believe it's the love of God that rescues us. It's the love of God that heals the brokenhearted. So what she was saying about love is not something that God can take away from us yeah. because it's, it's who he is and that is what gives us our value. I think that's something really interesting to talk about because when she was sharing that scripture um, where Paul was talking about, if anyone should boast, it's me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm all of these things. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I follow all the law, you know, yeah. all these different things that Paul was saying really mattered. But then he learned through experience that they really did not matter mm -hmm. so much, that we are all loved by God, and that's what makes the difference. And Jay, it just makes me kind of think about what you were talking about. Yeah. That striving through education, whatever it may be, to lift lift ourselves up. Of course, we want to better our lives, yeah. but it's sure. not where our intrinsic value yeah. comes from. It was definitely unhealthy the way I, I, I was striving for it. And then it trickled over into the workplace because when you have those difficulties when, and you finally make it into the door or, mm -hmm. you know, a window or a ceiling was cracked, <laughs> you know, then you just want to be like, okay, I can keep going. And so then I was striving and striving and striving for more. And I still wasn't getting the respect that like mm. that I had and I would find out and which is probably like against like HR rules and things like that. But certain positions I would have, I wasn't getting paid the same amount as the people that had it before me. Mm -hmm. And so that then was like, wait a minute, like yeah. then it made me want to fight more, mm -hmm. you know. So I, that really stuck out to me in the in what the clip that Joyce had was just like I then had to say what what like again, what is that balance of speaking up for myself and knowing my value, knowing my worth and saying, hey, like we need to talk about this pay value and then but also then saying but my worth at the end of the day yeah. is found in Christ alone yeah. like and I am known by him mm -hmm. I am loved by him and that's what brought up this scripture I said at Jeremiah 1 and 5 before I formed you in the womb I knew you and before you were born I consecrated you I have appointed you as a prophet to the nation so like then that that's one of those scriptures that stuck with me like God knows me he approves of me and he has a plan for me so at mm -hmm. the end of the day before I go to bed just rest in that. Yeah. yeah. You know? Well, let's ask Nancy Alcorn to join us now because um, I, th I think not only are our friends going to love Nancy, but you're <laughs> going to learn a lot from her. Yeah. So Nancy Alcorn is with us. Nancy is not only such a capable woman who has been helping women and girls for so many years, but she is also just a sweetheart, and I love her to pieces. So, Nancy, thank you very much for talking it out with us. Hi, thank you for having me. I love being with you guys, and I love Ginger because we're both a little mis bit mischievous and like to have a lot of fun. So <laughs> oh, this is trouble. This is good. <laughs> Sounds like some stories. Oh, oh, I love Nancy so much, <laughs> so much. Well, Nancy, as we're talking about this, you're in the position through Mercy Multiplied where young women are coming to you with devastating needs, mm -hmm. whether it's eating disorders or self-harm or substance abuse or even human trafficking, where a lot of things have come from a seed of not understanding their value. What do you see in young women who can't believe how valuable they are? Well, you know, when you've been uh, in situations where you have been abused a lot, like, you know, we all know Joyce's story, how she's helped people all around the world with her personal story. When you've been uh, in situations where you have been so devalued, even by people that should have loved you and and uh, been there for you, and yet uh, 
the abuse, the devaluation, all those things, it makes you feel awful about yourself. It makes yeah. you feel like, why was I even born? Does God even mm. love me? Does anybody love me? Is there any reason, you know, and Joyce, I think mentioned uh, in her teaching about uh a very familiar scripture. We all probably memorized it. If we did go to church when we were little kids, John three sixteen. for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And it's hard for us to understand that kind of love, especially when we've been mistreated and devalued like a lot of the girls we work with. So now I never share John three sixteen without sharing John three seventeen because uh, the girls that walk through the doors of mercy do feel condemned. They even condemn themselves because of the bad choices they've made. So the John three seventeen says, "For God did not send His Son into the world yeah. to condemn mm-hmm. the world." Mm-hmm but that the world Mm -hmm. through him might be saved. So we teach these girls to put their name instead of the world, put your name in that spot and know Mm -hmm. that God is not condemning you. He does not want you to condemn yourself and to help them understand John 10, 10, the enemy Mm -hmm. comes to steal, kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So if you're out there and you've been mistreated, used, abused, trafficked, um, you know, whatever may have happened to you in your past, it's very important for all of us to understand that if it's on the side of kill, steal, and destroy, that it did not come from God. It yeah. came from the enemy who wanted to destroy you. But Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So he shed his blood on the cross and bore the penalty of our pain. Uh, as Joyce said, he, he he's his heart was broken so that ours could be healed. So getting a personal revelation that God is not the author of our pain, that Satan is the one that came to kill, steal, and destroy, and Jesus paid the ultimate price so that we could be forgiven and we could have full uh, revelation of our value and his love for us. Yeah. So good. Gosh. Oh. <laughs> Nancy, I've heard you speak a few times and... And every time I've heard you, like and a few times I've been for Mercy events, and you're sharing about these amazing stories of these girls, and every time God speaks through you to me, and I leave feeling like He loves me too, and I haven't experienced half of what some of these girls go through, but He loves them so much, and He loves me so much, and I just, I love hearing you talk about that, because God wants to change them and love them so much. That's yeah. right, Erin. That's so true. And, you know, for a girl who believes that, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, if God loved me, then why did he let this happen to me? Yeah, Ooh, yeah. that's a hard and question. And that's a valid question. Yeah. yeah. But how is any one of us ever going to be able to surrender our lives to Christ and fully trust him mm-hmm. if we question his character if we believe that he is the one that caused the pain. Mm -hmm. So so getting that lie replaced with the truth of God's word and the fact that Jesus came and paid the price to redeem us from all the destruction of the enemy and to be able to replace lies with God's truth, it's just so powerful and life-changing and transformative. I want to just jump in and and ask you to say that again because it's so huge that those things that we often have believed as truth, mm-hmm. if if we can start to see those things as lies and replace them with the truth that God loved us so much that He gave us a way that He sacrificed, you know, it's a big word, but He essentially sent His own Son mm-hmm. to pay for us. And so all those things are very Christian words, but they're so real and applicable to our lives. Yeah. So tell, tell me that again, because there are so many of our friends watching right now who need to trade out some of those lies that are just stuck in their soul for the truth of how much God loves them and what He did for them. I would say to everyone watching, you will never walk in the full freedom that Christ died for us to have. He shed His own blood so that we can be free, fully free, to receive His unconditional love unconditional love. Mm. Doesn't matter what we did (laughs) yesterday, today, or even tomorrow, we are fully forgiven. And 
it is important for us to know and understand that if we believe that the things that were awful that happened to us, such as abuse, like what Joyce went through, things like that, if we believe that that was God doing that to us, then we will never surrender our lives to Him because there's no reason to trust Him. Right. We will continually question His character. But what I would say to you mm. is in Psalm 119, it's the longest chapter in the Bible, but it's full of some great, great mm. truths. Uh, and it may be one of the shortest verses in the Bible, I think, besides Jesus wept, but it says, in Psalm 119, one of the verses says, God is good and God does good. Mm. And also in James chapter one, it says that every good and perfect gift mm. comes from God. Well, it's getting abused, getting traffic, getting stuck in addiction or any generational patterns that may have been negative in your family that have been passed down or any of those things, good and perfect gifts. Absolutely not. So give yourself a break. Know that God loves you. Christ died so that you could walk in full freedom. And I put it like this. If let's say, Ginger, you have a house payment or let's say I have a house payment and Ginger decides to be all generous like she is. <laughs> and she goes to the finds out where my bank account is, where my house note is. She goes to the bank. She pays the full price for my house note so that and she lets me know hey here's the title deed you are free you will never have to pay for your house note again how silly would it be if i keep going to the bank every mm. month <laughs> trying to pay for something that has already been paid for yeah that's yeah. good so awesome. yeah that's so and amazing. that's what we do to god and we need to stop it yeah yeah isn't it cool just to, like, you're just setting me on fire over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need to stop it. <laughs> but no, I just... I said girl. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I think it's really um, amazing how you'd said a little bit earlier, how how simple it is to click the switch in your brain to choose that it's not why did God let this happen. Mm -hmm. Like, that is hard. Like, yeah, that's, that's big because I, I get that question a lot. I have I've asked that question. I've asked that. I'm saying, I yeah. have literally this past season of my life with certain things that have happened. I've literally like, well, God, why did you let? I felt like you let this. But it is literally a choice to say, you know what? I'm choosing to believe mm -hmm. that God loves me. All th God is good and God does good. Like that is who yes. he is. That is his character. And it's a choice that so anybody watching, mm -hmm. like you have the the authority through Jesus Christ to know that you can just make that choice mm -hmm. and say, I choose not to let the enemy keep telling me, you know, that God let this, that God let this. I can choose today and say, no, God is good. God yeah. loves me. Yeah. And he bought me with with the greatest price. I think of that commercial that was like, well, how much is this? This price. How much is this? This price. How much is this? And then you get to the certain part and it says priceless. Like, I like to think of myself having like a price tag on me, like at, at a store and says like priceless, priceless. you know, or like. Mm -hmm. He sent his only son to pay for me. So we do have a lot of value. I'm, it, I'm just encouraged by hearing how you share about it, Nancy. And we're not getting anywhere by holding on to that. You know, if if we can at least do a little experiment, yeah. you know, give God the opportunity to show his love to mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. he will pour it out. He will pour it out and he will change our hearts. And Nancy, you see that. What is the difference that you see in these young women when they begin to understand the value that they have? Oh, man, it's unbelievable because th they come in the door feeling worthless. They have spent, some of them have spent tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of dollars with the, quote, experts of the world who tell them you're damaged goods, you will never be able to do, be anybody or do anything, uh, you know, once an addict, always an addict, and yet the scripture says uh, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone is a new creation in Christ, old things have passed away and all things have become new. So we teach the girls, quit identifying with whatever addiction or behavior or whatever happened in the past and identify with the fact that mm -hmm. you are a child of God, mm -hmm. a daughter of the King. So what, so we're talking about replacing lies with truth. Say it's, I'm a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. All things are new. I'm a daughter of the King. I have value. God has a plan and purpose for my life. Jeremiah 29, 11. These are the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give you hope and a future. And all of a sudden, 
when they realized, hey, God is not against me. He's for me. And this wasn't his will, these things that happened to me. Right. And we use a lot of Joyce's materials to help them replace lies with truth. Mm. Battlefield of Mind, I think, is probably still, maybe, Ginger, you would know, is that still Joyce's top-selling book? It sure so is. Use, we use the heck out of that book. Man, <laughs> <laughs> me too. Replace <laughs> lies with truth. Yeah, no, and we have been honored um, to be able to work with you guys to to uh, support you and to be just a, a little part of the huge difference you're making in women and girls' lives for many, many years now. And um, it's, it's one of the things that we do through our Project Girl Initiative, and we're just thrilled to be able to see the impact that you're making and that God is making in people's lives. And we're, we're just so grateful. Nancy, thank you. Well, thank you. And Ginger, I want to correct one thing you just said. She said we play a small part. No, all of you <laughs> viewers out there, you need to know that Joyce Meyer Ministries plays a huge part in their monthly donations to us in allowing me to speak and at conferences or do programs such as this and help get the word out and uh, and also provided uh, the what we needed to put a facility in St. Louis, right there, where close to where Joyce Meyer Ministries is headquartered. So it's there's nothing small about it. It's huge, and we love you guys, and our heart of love is huge for you. And thank you for what you do for us. We feel the same, Nancy. Thanks so much. Love you. Thanks for being love with you. us, Bye, Nancy. Love all of you. Love you too. Bye. I love that woman. I, I cry too. every time she talks. I just. <laughs> She hits me right here. I, I just Jesus pours out of her, and I want I want to know that I'm that loved. That I want my daughter to know that that's how much God loves her. That he, she wells up with it. Yeah, it's just, it's amazing. Sorry, you should talk. No, I, too much. I, no, it, you're you're so right. It's just um, such a blessing. I, the years that I was able to uh, be the worship pastor at the Dream Center, it was. We used to have a you know a partnership that you know through yeah, Joyce Meyer right. Ministries mm -hmm. where a lot of the girls would come from Mercy and be able to serve and I just got to witness firsthand the 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 impact like I, the horrific stories that they would share of yeah. how what they came from yeah. the pain that they the experienced. pain that they experienced but what Mercy Ministries and Joyce Meyer Ministries has done for them I still have relationships with a bunch of the girls that went through the program that came to the Dream Center and served, like to see the transition from them coming from feeling so devalued, yeah. so unworthy, yeah. to then feeling like they were in a position to actually pour back into a mm. community. Man, it was it, it was so encouraging. It does it all, doesn't it? It does it all. It does it all. And I mean, I mean, it always filled my heart. And, and the girls that I know, they're still thriving, doing ministry right That's now. Awesome. Like I'm, ser it's just amazing to be a part of it and, there's and to nothing watch the journey. cooler to see someone in their pain and then to see that the transformation that god does in their life and it's like two different people their mm -hmm. countenance will change it's, and just it's just night and day yeah yeah it's amazing yeah it's amazing and it's why we're so passionate about project girl helping women to be restored, whatever it is that they've been through, yeah. making sure they understand how loved they are. And of course, Mercy Multiply being a part mm -hmm. of that. And then the other outreaches around the world, um, whether it's providing clean water, rescue from human trafficking, but also, and this is what's really important as well, it's not just about providing the physical needs, although those are vastly important, but it's about providing the spiritual needs. Yeah. For our friends right now who are talking it out with us, who feel that void in their life, who haven't felt value, it's through Joyce's teaching, sharing the Word of God, and making sure that all women and girls, wherever they are, have access to that truth that Nancy was talking about. So she said that Joyce really understands this personally, and that's, of course, how Project Girl was birthed. So if you'd like to find out more about Project Girl, you can go online, joycemeyer.org slash projectgirlgrl. Please find out more about it. We would love to have you join us in that. But we also want you to know what Aaron was talking about. We want you to understand the love that is so strong for you right now. So we're going to go back and listen to a little bit more of Joyce because she gets it. She has been in yeah. a dark place where it didn't feel like there was any love, and she discovered the true love. So let's hear what she has to say. What was my condition after being abused by my father? 
and abandoned into the situation by my mother who knew what he was doing but didn't have the courage to stand up to him. What, what was I like? I felt worthless. I felt guilty and condemned. I felt used. I felt damaged. My personality was all messed up. And I tried so hard to find some kind of worth and value in all the wrong things. Getting in the right group, even at church, getting in the right church group. You think there's not cliques inside churches? <laughs> Let me tell you something, there's always the group to be part of. And I worked so hard to be part of that group and I finally got what I wanted and they were the first ones to reject me when God called me to teach the Word. Because after all, women didn't do that. Problem was, I didn't know that when God called me, so I just started doing it. And I was already doing it after people were telling me I couldn't do it. I thought, well, I am. You say, well, what about what Paul said? You know, let's just get beyond that for a little bit. Let me tell you what Jesus said. There's no more male nor female. Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, but we are all one in Christ. Amen? We are all one in Christ. Paul was talking about cultural things, not things that apply to every woman for the whole rest of our life. And if you don't believe it, just think about the fact that Mary was the first one to carry the gospel message. Not Peter, not John, not Matthew, Mary. All the guys were sleeping and she showed up at the tomb early on Sunday morning. So let's hear it for the ladies, amen? Let me tell you something, you don't want a world without women because we get it done, honey. Amen? I, I love, love it. that. <laughs> We get it done. She's honey. right, though. She said honey at the end, too. She that. <laughs> Can you even imagine what this world would be like without women? I sometimes like to remind my husband what, what his life would be like Sad. if I wasn't there. You and wouldn't smelly. have anything. <laughs> smelly. Sad and smelly. Oh, it would, it would not be pretty at all. No. No. It, no. I, I just think of the disorganization, the underwear on the floor everywhere. Yeah. I think of all those things. All the, the little things like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to ask you about some of the scriptures that she shared because I, I think they're so great. And just to see what they make you think and, and how important they are. Um, the, the one that she was talking about, there is no more male or female, no more slave or free. I, for that to be in God's word, for that to be the foundation mm -hmm. of everything the world was built on, we've all missed it so many times along yes, the Lord. way. <laughs> so what does that mean to you when you guys hear that scripture? I love that verse. I think it's, and I think it's really timely for where we all are in life in general right now, that God doesn't see us because you do this and right. you do this, or because you are, regardless of how we categorize our, our lives as humans, we are one in Him and the rest doesn't matter. So I think we take too much stock in a lot of things that just he could probably care less about. I think and you're In fact, right. he yeah. tells us that. So I think if we can get that inside of us, that it doesn't actually matter what I do. It's not my who. No, it's not my do. It's my who, like Joyce tells us. Um, I would drastically change our lives. Mm -hmm. So I love that scripture. Yeah, I love it as well. It actually, as I was studying it, it gave me two different emotions. One was extreme excitement and hope, you know, but the other one was kind of sad. Hmm. Because Why? our world doesn't look like that. Oh, yeah, I agree. It just doesn't. Yeah. And so when you think of, like, no more male and female, it means mm. our nation. <laughs> and much of the world. And much of the world. So true. It's just like, it... It gives me hope to know that that is really what how God sees everything and desires for us. But it also is sad for me because it's like, mm -hmm. when are we going to get it? Mm -hmm. No more slave. And for, it, it's just hard for me because that was thousands of years ago <laughs> like that this was 
in the Bible, but we still haven't gotten it. No. So it's like, and I, so I had, of course, my Christianese side of me was like, yeah, that's right. I feel like what I just did. <laughs> no, but that's, yeah. you, but you're my hope. <laughs> you're so, you know, like, and yeah. I, I think half of me thinks like that, and the other half is just like, oh, when are we going to get it? Yeah. Like, when are we going to come together as believers and not be so divided mm-hmm. and not, when are men going to respect pe- clearly women have voices we have joyce thankfully she didn't know <laughs> thank you thankfully she wasn't raised like i was where i was a little intimidated by all of it but still pushed through it because thankfully she's able to be you know mm-hmm. where she is right now and we're able to do what we're doing you know thankfully there are other you know other women that do it too but we need it just needs to, we need to work better at working at it <laughs> and really yeah. looking. So that scriptures gives me hope, yeah. but it made me sad of the reality of where we are because we're divided as a church. No, I, I, <laughs> I get it completely so. because there are things that God laid down as truth, but man takes and perverts. Yes, 100%. And it changes the reality of what we're dealing with, but mm-hmm. it doesn't change the reality of who God is. Yeah. Or what he thinks about us or his love for us. Yeah. There's this scripture that you've probably heard so many times, but it's huge for me in this. It's First Peter 2 9, but you are a chosen people, yeah. a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. Mm-hmm. And that just means so much to me. And I've never I, 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 I hate to say this just so it's not misunderstood. I've never questioned my value. Because from the very beginning, my family laid a foundation of where my value came from in Christ, and they exemplified it. They showed it to me. I I was in the Word, and I believed it, and I don't know why. And so that tells me how much grace there is, because if anybody does not deserve what I have, it's me, you know? If anybody does not deserve the love that has been showered upon them, it's me. And yet, I've never question my value because um, I'm God's possession. And so I think of all those things that we put between us and the love of God, the way we do things, the mistakes that we've made, the way we look, the um, even, even things like where our value comes from. Our value does not come from society. It does not come from man. It does not come from our job. It doesn't come from our family. I think I I think of beautiful special needs children where in some countries they have no value at all. Yeah. No value at all because people don't see productivity or something like that. God doesn't look at them like that. He sees such value in the love that can pour out of people. And so it I don't know, it all just pulls me back around. As someone who has never questioned her value, it makes me so much more passionate to make sure that other people do know their value because I know what it feels to be valued. And I want other people to feel that too. And when there are so many hurts in the world, um, I I understand that that value gets shoved down and and pushed aside, and maybe it was e- never even there to begin with. So my desire, my passion, I guess, and I know yours too, and Nancy's and the entire ministry is for everyone out there watching right now to know that they are God's possession, not not in the wrong way, in in such a loving, like like a mama and a baby, like a dad and his child, to protect us, to love us, to nurture us, and to give us everything that he has. When we have that in our lives, we're really loved. So I don't know. I want to know what you guys think, because I think so much about the fact that some people will not even see God's love as value. Why does love equal value? But that's all there is, right? There's nothing else without the love of God. <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, one thing that that when you were saying that that stands out to me is that verse uh, Psalm 46 5, and it's our Project Girl verse. But man, I love it. God is with her, and she will not be moved. Yeah. And to hear you say and to talk about the reality of where we are right now, it's a horrible. 
But if we as women can rise behind the fact that God is with us, then we should unite and say, no, we, we know who we are. We know we're valued. We don't have to question our worth. And we won't be moved. No, and we will stand firm yeah. in what we know is truth because God is with us. We don't have to waver. I don't have to waver because I look at myself in the mirror and think, ugh, had a baby or two. Things look a little different. I don't have to waver because I don't have the title I want or because my husband said this about me or whatever the circumstances are. I don't have to waver because mm-hmm. I know who I am in Christ and I will not be moved. So that gives me hope. Yeah. But but I think we have to encourage each other with that. I think it doesn't come natural to all of us like it did for you, which I think is wonderful. I think it's beautiful. It is. It's really beautiful. And I just I automatically thought of some of the some people that, you know, are probably watching that maybe have been like me, like maybe you've been hurt by people or, and maybe you've been abandoned or maybe you've been, I, I didn't suffer or struggle with this, but I think of all the people that suffer it, major depression, mm-hmm. cutting, um, yeah, pain. Just, just really like anorexia. Like you just think about all those things that make you feel like you're not worth it and like no one loves loves you. But to if you've never experienced love, it's hard to understand yeah. Why does love make that? It's like a foreign thing. Yeah, it's like, yeah. But what does that even look like? What does that even feel like? Well, how do I even conceptualize that love gives me value yeah. when I don't even know what love is, you know? And so I just challenge you to try it. Just just ask God, mm-hmm. give him, he's way, like this is something that was, I just did a water fast. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> For six days, I only drank water. Mm. And I really wanted it to show me Discipline, but also show me that how his living water mm-hmm. could be enough. Mm-hmm. That was why I did it. Like I wanted his living water to be enough for me. His love, his living water, mm. his, his him and what like just to be enough for me. And I'm not saying do that. Like no, but I'm saying in that time I just had a revelation from God how his love was enough for me, and that he's just mm. sitting up there waiting on me to give him permission to love me the way that he wants to, because he's, he's a gentleman. Mm. So a lot of us haven't experienced that gentleman side. <laughs> and so because yeah. he's a gentleman, he's waiting on us to say, daughter, like, when are you going to ask me? And I just challenge you, like, if you're out there, just ask him, yeah. he, like ask him and he'll, he'll do it. He'll show he you. And ever since like that, day, like I, I was like, okay, mm. and I need you to show me your love in a new way. That's I've, so good. I've never a way that I've never experienced, and he's been doing it. Once you give him permission, he will do it. Yeah. Peyton has been asking, so she's four now, and when she gets dressed up, she likes to wear her cute little outfits, probably like Elsie, um, but <laughs> quite the fashion. I love very much, so, <laughs> very much. So, so every time she feels confident, <laughs> or you can tell she feels good, she'll go up to Mike, especially Mike, and she will say, "Daddy, am I beautiful?" Aww. and I'm a mess today. This is too much. Uh, <laughs> I love this topic so much. I'm so, I have such a heart for it. So anyways, Mike is always like, oh my gosh, you're the most beautiful girl in the whole world. And she just like lights up. It is, it is everything she needed in that moment. And that is the picture of what God is doing for us. We are his daughters and we're saying, am I enough? Am I Am I worth it? And God is saying, oh my gosh, I, lo- I made you. I, there is mm-hmm. nothing I love more in this world than you. You are Fearfully and wonderfully made. Let me just love on you. But yeah, isn't it beautiful how Peyton went to him though? Yeah, yes, she, she yes, exactly. You she had to go to him. She went to him. First yeah. she got dressed. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about the armor of God. We talked about all that stuff. Yeah. She got dressed and she went to him. And yeah. that's what we have to do as daughters of, of the most high. We have to get dressed. To God, what do you think of what do you think of me? And he's waiting right there. Yeah. He, he's waiting right there to ready. It's so funny too, because you talk about that that desire right to be loved to be fully accepted and and for for a woman um you're talking about Peyton and what she wears and and our granddaughter Elsie and what she wears she will dress up in this outfit that she thinks is the most beautiful thing and it's it's a tutu that lights up and a Daniel Tiger hat and no shirt <laughs> she's so free and she is just the most beautiful thing ever but God would see that and say 
Absolutely. Yes, you look good, girl. I have never seen anything more beautiful yes. than that. And that how that's how God sees us in all of our flaws, mm-hmm. in all of our quirkiness, in all those things that we don't like about ourselves. And he says, Yes. Yeah. That is exactly what I wanted to see in you. That's the creativity that I used when I created you and I made you perfect. Mm -hmm. And all those things that you look in the mirror and don't like yourself, God is saying, yes, I want to use those things for my glory and for your good. Mm -hmm. That's what that kind of love is like. It's not looking down and saying, oh, you know, I could love you a little bit more if you do this. God never does that to Mm -hmm. us. No, He loves us. He loves us just as we are. Yeah. It's I'm going to get a light up tutu, though. Well, I think we all should. Yeah, I think I will. I think we all should. that. <laughs> we'll do shirts, but other than that. <laughs> I appreciate you letting me know the rules. <laughs> well, our prayer for you is that there has been something that has been said today, whether it's something that Nancy shared, whether it's a scripture that someone shared, that you can hold on to one little glimmer of love that God has for you. Because if you can just grab onto that one little bit, Mm -hmm. He will do the rest. He will water it and He will nurture it and it will grow into something that will change your life from the inside out. So we want you to know today how loved you are, how valuable you are, wherever you are, whatever you've done, whatever is keeping you from that realization right now, God can break down those walls. So we invite you that if there's anything at all that we can do for you, you can go to JoyceMeyer.org, put in a prayer request. We would love to pray for you. Check out Project Girl at ProjectGirl.org and um, find out how you can reach out to other women to share that love of Christ. Because I'll tell you, there's nothing to really grow that love in us than to share it with other yeah, people. Yeah. So uh, we hope that you'll do that. And thank you for talking it out with us today. Thank you, ladies, no, so much. Thank it's you. been so good. Thank you. We hope you'll all subscribe. We hope you'll write some fun reviews. We hope you'll tell your friends. Tell your friends. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we'll see you in a couple more weeks. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Love Bye, you all. Bye-bye. Bye.